okay so I've got a week off work so I'm sat here with not a great deal to do and thinking let's do some really frank discussions about um, dogs so I thought we could discuss a little um, trigger stacking so to in order for us to understand trigger stacking we need to be able to really understand the effects of culmative stress in our dogs so sometimes even the most even the most well balanced dog has what we call a threshold a breaking point yeah where they will uh, react to something um, and it's important to never forget that um, every single time our dog is exposed to a trigger or a stimulus that they are un uh, uncomfortable with their their brain is bathed in a bath of stress hormones okay cortisol and we know that cort cortisol can remain in the body for quite some time up to 72 hours um, and what happens is every time our dog is ex is exposed to a trigger or comes across a trigger on a walk so let's say in this example our dog's triggers are children scooters and traffic okay so this is just our example so to start with on the walk you um, have to cross a busy road and there's a lot of cars but your dog copes with the cars because they want to go on a walk so we sit and wait at the road the dog crosses the road and you can see that the dog is low level stressed. There's yawning, there's shaking off, um, low level signs of stress. Later on in the walk there's, you know, it's the summer holidays and there's a lot of children around but they're in the distance, you're able to give your dog plenty of space from that trigger but nevertheless they are there. And again, your dog experiences the trigger and another cortisol release happens in the brain okay and it and it's accumulative it builds up yeah um, later on in the walk you see children playing on scooters at a skate park again there's enough distance there for it to remain low level and not cause an outright reaction in your dog but internally the same thing is happening again another cortisol release and because this is accumulative the dog creeps higher and higher up a ladder, closer and closer to what we call their threshold, okay, which is their breaking point, which we all as humans have. You know, we've all experienced that where we've been little niggling things throughout the day have irritated us, and then um, you want to cook a spaghetti bolognese, you open the cupboard and there's no goddamn pasta, and it's the end of the world. You know, oh, mm, um, and actually, it's not a big deal. But because you've had several things throughout the day that have led to that moment, it feels like a big deal. And we need to be really careful when our dogs, because what happens then is they're exposed to triggers low level, low level, low level, low level. And then another final low level happens, but because they're so close to threshold, another low level event happens. Maybe a child then scoots a little closer than normal on their scooter and boom the dog chases the child or lunges out at the child and reacts so be careful to monitor the effects that triggers are having in your dogs really look out for signs of stress uh, if your dog has a reactive episode because the cortisol levels can remain so high for such a long period of time we need to allow the dog um, time to reach baseline normal internally um, in their brain chemistry so that then when we next take them out they're in a, a better state of mind and in a healthier place to then encounter those triggers again. It's really important to try and pair all of those triggers with positive reinforcement so that then we can start to change the dog's mindset about those triggers in any case. But do be careful when you are working to change a dog's perception of their triggers, of trigger stacking. Um, often it's something that we overlook and 
it's an error to do so because that's when you know it's it's unfair on the dog if your dog has a reactive episode don't walk it the next day do scent games do some enrichment activities do some trick training at home let them get back to normal because what will happen if you don't take that time to let them uh, almost declimatize to that is you will take them out the next day they will see something at a far away distance and boom they'll be right there because they haven't come down the ladder enough okay they haven't their, their, their internal chemistry is still so highly aroused and stressed from the event because we haven't allowed them time to just decompress. Okay, So be really mindful of that in your dogs. And um, yeah, I hope that was interesting. <laughs>